Good afternoon, Theories of Crime and Delinquency. This is number two of a series of short videos to help us get through all the theories we need to get us through the syllabus so everybody could pass the class. So let us get right to it. We left off talking about strain, talking about status frustration and reaction formation. But there's a basic problem with Merton's theory. The basic problem is that he says that there are five different modes of adaptation. In other words, he admits right up front, not everybody who experiences blocked opportunities to the American dream, not everybody who experiences strain turns to crime. Some people who experience strain commit crimes. Other people who experience strain, other people who experience strain, conform. Well, how does that really help us then become a theory? Isn't that kind of saying like free will? Remember, some people use their free will to commit crimes. Other people use their free will to conform. Well, no shit. We didn't need to take a class on theory to know that some people choose crime and other people don't. Some people who are poor turn to crime. Other people who are poor don't. So his theory, by creating five different modes of adaptation, doesn't really advance us much toward understanding what causes crime. Now, to be fair, we were talking about risk versus cause. And we recognize that none of these are causes of crime. They're all risk factors. So Merton is correct in arguing, or at least we think he's correct. That's for studies to suggest. But he might be correct in suggesting that strain is a risk factor contributing to crime. But that still doesn't tell us which people experiencing strain are more at risk and which people experiencing strain are less at risk. Well, let's take a look at how this could work out. Fortunately, we have two theorists, Cloward and Olin, who are going to help rescue Merton's strain theory by helping us understand which individuals are more likely to innovate and which individuals experiencing strain are more likely to conform. The name of their theory is delinquency and opportunity, and the theory can be stated really, really simply. Whether individuals innovate or conform to strain depends on the opportunities available to them. Whether individuals conform or innovate depends on the opportunities available to them. So let's take the city of Newark. I've talked a bit this semester about having gone to graduate school in Newark, was the murder capital of the country at the time, lots of crime. Well, here's just a little map, a very rudimentary one of the city of Newark. Now, as I've stated throughout the semester, I lived one train stop away from New York City. So this was my little apartment. A couple blocks away was a big abandoned factory, Westinghouse. It was what was known as, or what is known as a, a Superfund site. It's one of these places that's considered an environmental hazard place and you cannot develop on it until it is cleaned up. Very far away, these are all abandoned buildings. There are some homes here. You have major street there and some homes on the other side. All right, the entire neighborhood is poor. Remember, this is your zone two. So you've got high population density. All of the housing is public housing or it is uh, tenement apartment buildings, which means you've got high population density extreme poverty, which means there's more competition for resources. Now let's be clear. No, there weren't any blockbuster video places on the corner. There wasn't a, a you know, pink berry or places to, to get frozen yogurt or ice cream, but there were some jobs. There was one drugstore on the corner. There was a library on the corner. So suppose you're 15 years old, you want to avoid getting into trouble you're going to have two to three times as many teen, high school teenagers competing for those few jobs. Someone is going to get that job. The individual who gets the job bagging groceries or the individual who gets the job reshelving books, they're going to conform because they have an opportunity to the American dream, arguably, that hasn't been blocked. Or someone who grows up right near the train tracks, they might have an opportunity to conform if the family could afford the $40 a month pass, train pass, 
they might be able after school to take the train into the city and to look for a job in the city. But we have to remember that that takes time away from studying. That takes time away from family. And it costs a lot of money, so it takes time away from the income that they're going to earn in their part-time job. The point I'm trying to make is some people will be able to conform to strain. Lots more competition for jobs, but some individuals will get the jobs. Those will be the conformists. Other people might not be able to afford a ticket into the city, but they might otherwise live near the train station. They might become the innovators. Hopefully we know that train stations, bus terminals, bus stops are crime hotspots. You've got people who may as well have targets on them. They're carrying luggage. Maybe they've got a camera out. They clearly don't know where they are. They appear lost and they probably have lots of cash with them. And so maybe individuals start to pick pockets at the train station, or maybe individuals who live near the train station start to sell drugs. People come in on a train, the train stops, the doors open, they do the very quick transaction, and before law enforcement has any chance to see evidence, the doors close and the train keeps going. Those individuals might become the innovators. People who live very far away from the city, very far away from the train station, they live near the abandoned buildings, those might be the individuals who become the retreatists. They might be the individuals who just give up altogether. They don't try to achieve middle class status. Maybe they become hooked on drugs. Maybe they become alcoholics. Whatever the case, they just drop out of society altogether. The point being, Cloward and Olin help solve the dilemma that Merton created by not specifying who innovates, who conforms, who becomes a ritualist, who becomes a retreatist, and who rebels. Cloward and Olin provide the answer. How people adapt to strain depends on the opportunities available to them. That's all for now. Good luck studying. I'll see you at the library. Actually, I won't because it's on quarantine. See ya.